Data Representation, Lesson 3, Characters. Contents. Recap on binary and binary edition. What is a character? How do computers store characters? In our previous lessons, we saw that computers store data using binary. Binary is represented using the symbol 0 or the symbol 1. In this example, we've got the binary number 1101. We know from our previous lessons that in binary our first column is worth 1, second column is worth 2, then 4, and then 8. So we have 1 in the 8 column, 1 in the 4 column, and 1 in the 1 column. So we have 8 plus 4 plus 0 plus 1 gives us 13. Okay, in one of our previous lessons we also looked at how you could add two binary numbers together. So in this example, we've got the binary value 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0, 1. To add them together, we do it just the same as we would do normally. We work from right to left, adding each pair of bits. So here, on the right, we've got 0 and 1. 0 and 1 is 1. Move to the left, we've got 0 and 0, which is 0. Then 1 and 0, which is 1 and 0 and 1, which is 1. We can check the answer by working out what each of these binary values is in deanery. So the first value is 4, the second value is 9, and 4 plus 9 should be 13. If we check the answer 1, 1, 0, 1, we can see that this is indeed the binary value for 13. In binary though, what is 1 plus 1? What would happen if we did 1, 0, 1, 0 plus 1, 0, 0, 1? Well, the mass is the same. The only difference is that when we have 1 plus 1, this is 0, carry 1 into the next column. In this example, this would create what we called overflow, where the result becomes too big to store in the given number of bits. So, what is a character? Well, a character can be named letter, symbol, or digit. But a digit can also be a character. Well, hold that thought, because we'll come back to it a little bit later. But characters can be anything. The letter A, B, C, the dollar sign, an open bracket, the digit 1, the digit 8. And characters are even those smileys or emojis that we see on our mobile phones. So, let's look at how computers store characters. A character set is simply the complete list of unique characters that a computer can make use of. So in this image here, we have what we call a character set. It lists all the unique characters that the computer can represent. And we can pick out each individual character. Some of these characters we will recognize, other as these characters we perhaps won't recognize yet. But let's take a look at this character here. This is the character for capital A. If we look along that row, we'll see that the character A, or capital A, has the code, the decimal value, 65. So we now know that capital A can be given the value 65. In the previous slide, we discovered that we could assign the number 65 to the letter capital A. But why did we assign 65 to the letter capital A? Well, this comes from what is called ASCII, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And back in the 1960s, people got together to agree what number, what value to give to each character. So that if you passed a text file to a different computer, the computer would still be able to understand the file because the same number represented the same character. In this example that we saw here, obviously we saw that the capital A had the value 65. If we continue to look at the ASCII table, we'll see that we can find the lowercase a character. And the lowercase a character has the decimal value 97. So lowercase a in ASCII is given the value 97. We can continue looking at this ASCII table. We'll see in the middle column 
that we've also got digits. Now we said before that digits were also called characters. When we store a digit as a character, it has a completely different code. You'll notice that if we find the character for the digit 3, it has the code 55. So 3 is given the ASCII code 55. We can also see in this ASCII table that there are symbols as well. Here in the middle column we can find the plus symbol. The plus symbol is also a character, and in ASCII the plus symbol is given the character code 43. So the plus sign in ASCII is given the decimal value 43. So in summary, how do computers represent characters? Well, a character may be a letter, symbol, digit, or even a non-printable character. Each character is given a unique number, so that no two characters have the same number given to them. And this number can then be converted into binary, just as we have done in the past. Upper and lowercase letters have different values. For instance, capital A has the value 65, and lowercase a has the value 97. So, what was this we were talking about in terms of upper and lowercase characters having different codes? And why does capital A have the code 65? And why does lowercase a have the code 97? What's the difference between these? And what's the significance of the difference? Well, if we were to write down the binary for the value 65, representing capital A, the binary for 65 would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. But how do I make lowercase a? Well, to make lowercase a, I simply take the code for capital A and flip the 32nd bit because the difference between 97 and 65 is 32. So if I flip this bit here, I now get the binary for 97, and 97 represents lowercase a. This makes it really easy to convert between uppercase letters and lowercase letters because you just find the bit representing 32 in the number and flip it from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0, depending on whether you're converting between uppercase or lowercase. So, we can now store characters in ASCII. But how many characters are there? Well, we need all the letters of the alphabet, and we know there are 26 letters in the English alphabet. But we also need to represent upper and lowercase letters. So we actually need 52 letters. But then there are the symbols that we need to store as well. The digits, 0 to 9. The non-printable characters that we've looked at. And then there are the accents that we might need to use. So, what about other languages? For instance, we don't just write documents in English. There are documents in Russian, Greek and Japanese. These languages have their own different alphabets. And each of these characters in these alphabets would need their own different unique codes. So, the deeper question is, why will we run out of numbers? What is the problem with ASCII as we've looked at it so far? OK, so the problem with ASCII dates back to the 1960s. Back in the 1960s, computers were using different numbers for different characters. And two different computer systems would have a different number for the letter A or the letter B or the letter C. So if you were sharing documents between two different computers, the two computers couldn't read the text in the same way. So ASCII was agreed as the standard to use for representing characters. But back in the day, memory was expensive. So when ASCII was created, it only used either 7 or 8 bits for each of those characters. So how many characters can you store if you have 7 bits? And how many characters can you store if you have 8 bits? Well, in 7 bits, the largest number that we could store would be 7 ones. Doing the maths, we know that 7 ones 
adds up to 127. It's 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. But don't forget we've also got a character code 0. So we can add 1 to that and that gives us a total of 128 characters. So with 7 bits we've got the character codes 0 to 127 and that gives us a total of 128 characters. If we have 8 bits then we've got 8 ones. So we've got 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4, plus 2, plus 1, which is 255, plus the zero code gives us a total of 256. So in 8-bit ASCII, we'd be able to represent a total of 256 characters. So, as we discovered previously, there are other alphabets other than English. There are other special characters that we need to store. So ASCII doesn't really give us enough codes for all of those different characters that we need. And now memory is much cheaper. So we've got other methods that we can use to represent characters. One of the alternatives to ASCII is a method called Unicode. And Unicode can use 16 bits or more. So therefore, how many characters can you store if you've got 16 bits? Well, again, we write out all the ones, in this case 16 ones. I'm not going to do the math this time. I simply used a calculator to work out that that's 65,536 characters. Or, if you wanted to work it out quickly, it's 2 to the power 16. 2 because we're in binary, and 16 because we've got 16 bits. So now we can store more characters because we've got more codes, we could deal with things like the emojis. And it's interesting to note that the poo emoji has the Unicode value 128169. It's also possible that you might want to try something so that you can see these character codes in action. If you have a Windows PC, you can load Microsoft Word. If you load Microsoft Word, you get yourself a blank document and then hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and use the number pad not the numbers across the top of your keyboard, but the numbers on the actual number pad to the side, and then type in the code 065, have a look to see what happens. So hold down the Alt key and type 065. What's actually happening is you're telling Microsoft Word to give you the character that has the ASCII code 065. You can do the same by holding down the Alt key and typing the code 128169. This will tell Word to give you the Unicode character that has that number. Give it a go and find out what character has that code. So finally, as always, it's worth pausing for thought. Can you explain to yourself how computers store characters? Could you explain, for instance, how the computer stores the character capital A? Could you explain how the computer stores the character lowercase a? Are you able to explain the difference between ASCII and Unicode? And can you explain why we need Unicode as opposed to ASCII? If you can't answer any of these questions, go back to the previous slides, review the material, and then come back and see if you can explain these concepts to yourself.